If you've ever been driving your Tesla and thought to yourself, there's no way my range should be dropping this quickly, even on days when you're barely even driving, well, this video is going to be for you. Most Tesla owners assume that range loss only happens when the car is actually in motion, but that's only part of the story. In reality, your Tesla can be losing range while it's parked, while it's preconditioning, and even just from how you heat or cool the cabin during use. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through the real settings and everyday habits that actually unlock the maximum battery retention and real world range. And make sure you stick around for point number eight because it's one of the most important range killers that almost nobody talks about. All right, let's get into it. Okay, now before we actually touch any settings, we need to quickly reframe what range really means in a Tesla because this is where most people tend to get it wrong. Range isn't just how far the car can drive on a single charge, like saying, hey, Tesla says that my vehicle has a 350 mile range, so that is it. Well, that number only tells part of the story. In reality, range is the combination of two things working together. One, how efficiently you drive and two, how well you preserve the battery between charging sessions. And that second part is the one most people completely overlook, as your Tesla can lose range while it's parked, while it's driving, while it's sitting overnight, or even just from background features running continuously. And so because of that, unlocking maximum range isn't about finding one hidden setting and then calling it a day, it's about stacking a bunch of small efficiency wins, we could call them, on top of each other every single day. And when you do that, well, the difference in real world range can be much bigger than most people expect. So let's start with one of the biggest sources of range loss that most people don't even think about, and that's range loss that happens when you're not driving at all. One of the main culprits here is with sentry mode. Now don't get me wrong, sentry mode is an awesome feature and I use it all the time, but it's important to understand that it's also a constant energy drain. And that drain can be pretty significant depending on where you're parked and how long the car is sitting in that place, especially when you're not playing plugged in during that time. When sentry mode is enabled, your Tesla is running all those multiple cameras around the cabin, around the car I should say, and in the cabin, keeping the onboard computer active and never fully going to sleep. So instead of the car resting, it's basically staying alert the entire time. So if you're parked on the street in a busy parking lot or in a city environment with a lot of foot traffic around the vehicle, well sentry mode can quietly eat away at a surprising amount of range over the course of even one day. I've personally seen as much as a 15 to 20% drop in range just from leaving sentry mode on while I've been parked at a busy airport parking lot. And so that's why this isn't about turning sentry mode off completely and all the time. It's just about being intentional and smart about where and when you actually need it enabled. This next one catches a lot of people off guard and that's the cabin overheat protection setting. It's a really useful feature, especially when it comes to protecting the interior of the vehicle, but if it's running all day, every day, it can quietly cost you a noticeable amount of range. So when cabin overheat protection is enabled, your Tesla will actively work to keep the interior temperature below a certain threshold, even when the car is parked, and most of the time when it's parked, in fact. And that means it's using energy in the background when you're out doing errands or whatnot. And whether you realize it or not, often pumping the AC for hours on end. So again, the key here isn't turning the feature off completely. It's simply understanding that it does consume energy even while the car is parked. And a small trick you could use in the hot summer if you're comfortable with this is to just leave the windows vented slightly, which will allow a ton of that hot air to escape the cabin rather than only relying on the AC and the cabin overheat feature to keep the car cool if that's what you're after. 
Preconditioning is actually one of the best tools you have for improving range, but only if you use it the right way. So when you precondition your Tesla, it's warming up the battery and adjusting the cabin temperature ahead of time before you get in. And both of those play a big role in the overall efficiency once you do start driving. The most important rule to remember with preconditioning though is this. Try to only do it when the car is plugged in, as if you precondition on battery power, you're basically draining range before you even leave. But when you precondition while the car is plugged in, when well, you're letting wall power do most of the heavy lifting instead of pulling energy from the battery. And that means when you get into the vehicle, well, the cabin is already comfortable, the battery is already warm, and regen braking will work properly right from the start. Especially in colder weather, this can make a massive difference in real world range and overall just vehicle efficiency. Now let's talk about the biggest range killer year round, being climate control. This one has a massive impact on range, especially if you're driving in really hot or really cold weather. In the winter, blasting the cabin heat absolutely destroys range. Heating cold air takes a ton of energy and the colder it gets outside, well of course the harder the battery has to work just to keep the cabin warm. It's the same concept as why my gas bill at home is $400 a month in the winter to keep the house warm. A much better strategy is to lower the cabin temperature slightly and then rely more on heated seats and the heated steering wheel if possible. Those features use far less energy and do a much better job of keeping you comfortable without draining the battery as quickly. And the same idea applies in the summer. Cranking the air conditioning to the max pulls hard on the battery, especially at highway speeds when efficiency already takes a hit. Instead, setting a reasonable cabin temperature and trying to use the ventilated seats if your Model 3 or Model Y has them can make a noticeable difference in range. Next up, let's talk about driving settings because these have a bigger impact on range than most people realize. So one of the easiest changes you can make is using chill mode in the dynamics. And rest assured, chill mode doesn't make your Tesla slow, it simply makes it smoother as it limits aggressive power spikes and keeps acceleration more consistent, which ends up directly helping with efficiency. For daily driving, this is one of the simplest ways to improve range without even thinking about it. I always leave it on chill mode, which is rendered useless though since my wife never does. But hey, it's about some balance, right? Regenerative braking also plays a huge role here, and it's one of the reasons Teslas can be so efficient in the real world. You can think of regen braking as essentially free energy, as when you use one pedal driving, which makes Teslas awesome, well, the vehicle is able to recapture energy that would normally be lost as heat through traditional braking and friction, and then feed it back into the battery instead. So this reduces wasted energy every time you slow down and improves overall vehicle efficiency, especially in stop and go driving. Now, let me make this clear that in newer Teslas, you can't turn on or off regen braking, but in some older models running older software, you can actually turn on or off regen braking. And so if you can do this, I'd suggest leaving it on at all times. There's really no downsides to it. One of the first upgrades I recommend on day one with your new Tesla Model 3 or say the new Model Y Juniper is protecting the interior, especially before dirt, snow, and road salt have a chance to settle into the stock carpets. So these 3W Thorax TPE floor liners are made specifically for the Model Y Juniper, that refreshed new model using 3D scanning, which means they are going to be fitting perfectly edge to edge with no gaps, curling, or sliding around. Plus, the Model Y pattern tread even matches the Tesla's design language and gives great grip when your shoes are wet. They're also 100% waterproof, of course, easy to rinse off just with a hose, and can handle temperatures ranging from negative 40 Fahrenheit to 176 Fahrenheit without cracking or warping. Perfect for winter, summer road trips, beach sand, coffee spills, 
anything that you're going to be throwing at these floor mats. Compared to cheap traditional rubber mats that you might find somewhere else, TPE is lighter, more flexible, recyclable, and toxin free. So it looks cleaner and lasts way longer in your Tesla. Now, a few premium touches I love about these 3W liners are the following. Number one, 45 degree soft spike anchors to keep them locked in place. Metal pedal shields to protect the bases long term is a really nice aesthetic touch as well. So look, if you're taking delivery of a Tesla anytime soon, this is one of those day one upgrades that keeps your Tesla looking brand new from day one and for years to come. You can pick up a set of 3W liners for yourself using the link down below in this video's description and pinned comment to get the best and latest bonus available. This next one surprises a lot of people, being that autopilot and full self-driving don't magically add range to your vehicle, but what they do extremely well is remove inefficient human inputs. So when you're using autopilot or FSD, the car accelerates more smoothly, it brakes more predictably, and avoids a lot of the unnecessary speed changes that most of us make as drivers without even realizing it. And honestly, with the newer software versions, especially FSD's version 4, 14 that has come out over the past couple of months, this has become even more noticeable. The driving is incredibly smooth, far more confident and much more consistent than it used to be. And that smoothness matters because smoother throttle and braking inputs almost always translate into better efficiency. So it's not about going faster or slower with these features and it's definitely not about the car somehow creating extra range out of nowhere. It's more about consistency in in the driving inputs themselves, which compounded over hundreds of miles does make a big difference. Essentially, when speed changes are minimized and inputs are predictable, the battery doesn't have to work as hard, and that plays a big role in unlocking better real-world range over time. Wheels and tires matter a lot more for range than most people even realize. And there's actually plenty of real world data that backs this up. In general, larger diameter wheels are less energy efficient, even though slightly over thousands of miles it can add up. They tend to be heavier, they increase aerodynamic drag, and they usually come paired with wider performance oriented tires. All of that means the car has to work harder just to keep moving and go the same distance, which directly impacts range. And this is why you'll often see noticeably better efficiency numbers on smaller wheeled setups, especially on the Model 3 and Model Y, for example. On top of that, tire pressure plays a huge role here. Underinflated tires increase rolling resistance significantly more, which can noticeably hurt range. And that's why it's important to regularly check your tire pressure and keep it at Tesla's recommended PSI. Seasonal tires matter as well. Winter tires almost always reduce range compared to summer or all season tires because they use softer rubber compounds and more aggressive tread patterns to help improve grip. And that extra grip is great for safety, of course, but it comes at the cost of higher rolling resistance and therefore slightly lower efficiency. Now let me make this clear, this doesn't mean you need to change your wheels or tires just for range, but understanding how wheel size, tire type, and tire pressure all affect efficiency helps set realistic expectations, especially when comparing different configurations or wondering why your range changes throughout the year. Extra weight is another quiet range killer that a lot of people don't really think about. Things like a packed trunk, heavy items stored in the front, or roof accessories that you're not actively using all add weight that the car has to move around every single time you drive. The important thing to remember is that every time you accelerate, there is an energy cost associated with moving that extra weight. And while regen braking does help recover some of that energy when you do slow down, well, it never recovers 100% of course. So over time, that extra weight adds up and takes a toll on efficiency. Less weight simply means less work for the motors and the battery, which translates into better efficiency and improved range, especially during stop and go driving. 
Let's now quickly speak about speed because this is one of the biggest factors affecting range, especially on the highway. So once you get above roughly 120 kilometers per hour, well, aerodynamic drag increases dramatically. And that's when range really starts to drop off a cliff. And this is also why EPA range ratings often don't match real world highway driving and why range tends to take a noticeable hit on longer road trips. At higher speeds, the car just has to push a lot more air out of the way, and that requires significantly more energy from the battery. Speed is hands down the fastest way to kill range, and the important thing to understand is that you don't need to slow down drastically to see a benefit. Even dropping your speed by a small amount can have a surprisingly large impact on efficiency and overall range on your trip. Think of it this way, if you're driving 200 miles, you might think that getting from point A to point B would use the same amount of energy going 80 kilometers per hour versus say 180. But in reality, even though you might get there a lot quicker going 180, you're probably going to have significantly less energy left over because to get there, you had to use a lot more energy to maintain that high speed. It really gets exponential in terms of the aerodynamic drag and therefore the amount of energy that is pulling from the battery. If today's video provided you with any value, please take a second to leave it a like and consider subscribing subscribing to my channel, I post every single week on Saturdays. Also make sure to check out my portfolio of content. I have dozens of videos already on the channel covering things such as road trip tips, winter range tips, ownership tips in general, and everything in between. And finally, don't forget to check out the links down below in this video's description and pinned comment for everything from signing up to my new email list for my upcoming product and getting some Amazon accessories over on my Amazon storefront. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.